Hi, beautiful. You look so good today. Thank you for being here today with me. Look at you, looking back at me, staring at each other, looking gorgeous. What's up? Today we're watching people get box braids and slash do the box braids themselves. And today is going to be a huge learning experience for me because I have never done box braids. I don't know much about box braids. I just am fascinated by box braids. Nothing is more satisfying than when I see a black woman or or man braid hair. It's like magic coming out of your hands. It's beautiful. Every single section is perfectly detailed. It relieves all of my stress and worries. I need some of that today and I'm gonna get some of it. Let's watch some girls get some really sickening box braids and hopefully I can learn a thing or two. Let's do it. Up first, we have a video by L Exclusive TV, and this is called How To Knee Length Knotless Box Braids for Beginner Easy Technique Plus Parting Space Tutorial. This is exactly what I need to start with. I need to know how this all works. Your boy is starting from scratch. I've definitely seen a few videos before, but I haven't really paid full attention, so here's my time to actually understand and appreciate the art of box braids. So the exact look that we're going for today falls into the very full categories. So I'll be dividing the bottom section from her ear down into four equal rows, and the top section will be divided into seven rows. So I'm sure some of you watching have like seen all of this before and like whatever, but some people I know have never seen this before. So just get ready for the most satisfying thing ever. I'm going ahead to part out that first row or rather make a rough draft of the first row. And once I have a good idea of what I want the row to look like or the size that I want that row to be, I go ahead and just place some gel directly into the parting space. With using a comb with a very, very skinny rat tail, I'm cleaning up that parting to be exactly how I want it. So first of all, you're already seeing that the part is like perfect. And then we're adding that gel in there. I definitely have seen that before. I think the gel is supposed to make everything stay intact and make it easier to get a grip on the hair, except I don't really know because gel kind of makes things more slippery. So I guess we'll find out. The gel is very important because it makes cleaning up that line easy and sharp. Once the row is prepped and ready, then that's why you prep the hair for the braids. I'm doing so by using my comb to section out the hair for each braid and I'm doing four braids in this exact row. So again, I'm using the gel directly into the parting space to sharpen those parts and we have created all four sections. I'm combing out each little section or braid to be and I'm twisting it up while it's waiting to be braided up I still haven't even seen a braid be done yet But like you just have to appreciate like the amount of time that is put into box braiding I've had friends have box braids before and I've heard the stories and like they're there for the entire day or like six hours or whatever It's a long 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 process. We're gonna start off by sectioning off the braiding section into three parts okay. vertically and start Got it. braiding the client's hair alone. Okay, wait, I'm learning a lot. Mainly right now, the fact that she has that glob of gel in the back of her hand, that is such a good idea. That way when you braid, you can kind of like dip your finger in and get that braid super, super smooth and get all those little baby hairs inside the braid. I'm totally using that trick from now on when I braid hair. So simple, I know. Call me stupid, but like, it's still genius. But once you've braided the hair a couple times, and usually I do about two times, then I'm going to hook the smallest braiding hair into the right side and I hook it tightly and slip it right through my index finger then start braiding as normal. Okay, so I've definitely done this before. I always end up with only two strands and I, I'm curious to see how you end up with so many strands of hair. How does this work? And once I get back to the right side again where my fingers are open, I'm going to slip the second braiding strand in. Oh braid a my bit God, I'm so right dumb. Again, is open. This is why we trust the braiding experts because that makes so much sense. You add another strand in, that way you end up with all three strands. Duh, Brad. Look how tight she's getting that to the scalp. Like, look at how precise and tight it is. Okay, now she's on the second row and we're just gonna start seeing those little squares start to form. And I think she's doing like a bricklay pattern, which means there's no braid that's directly on top of each other. That way the hair looks fuller and thicker. The next row, there's gonna be a braid in between all the other braids that she just did on the bottom row. So there will be no gaps, no spaces, because if you put all the braids on top of each other, you'll end up with like stringy, weird, thin looking hair. Um, But look at her go. The finger placement is so different for me. Like I've never braided on top like that. I've always gone like un from underneath, but I think that's how you get that really tight, beautiful braid. And look at the sections, you guys. You can't tell me this isn't so satisfying. There's such a huge difference between somebody who's like mediocre at braiding and then like an expert like this. You can really notice the difference in the quality of braids. It's so worth going that extra mile to make these braids look perfect. 
perfect. Oh my god. The amount of time. I know I keep saying this, but like, how do your fingers not cramp up? I would love to know. Look at that brick lay sectioning and just how precise it is. Okay, let's watch her finish this up. So this part is all about making everything come together with some finishing touches. I'm starting with my pair of scissors and trimming away any flyaways. Don't be lazy on this part, okay? It's tedious. I don't know what that foam was, but I'm interested in knowing what it is. But it's very beneficial with making your braids look crisp and making them look neater for a longer period of time. And the next thing that I do is use some foaming mousse. Honestly, if you ask me what this does for the braids, I wouldn't even be able to tell you. I just know that my clients always find it so satisfying. I saw that honestly, it really has no real purpose in it, but I always did it for their satisfaction and just to massage their scalp a bit, you know? I was literally just wondering like, why do you put foam over the braids? Like, does that do anything? Because it seems like the braids are already very tightly braided and there's a lot of uh, gel on there. So I'm not sure foam is gonna make any difference, but she said her clients like it. So we're gonna do it for the clients, you know? To finally seal the deal, I'm going in with some edge booster, edge control and- Look at the precision and length. Look at the precision and length. Sorry, you guys. Like, I'm so happy with the outcome, and so was my client, who literally, by the way, went on vacation right after, which braids are perfect for. Oh my God, she looks incredible. You can just be on the go without so much maintenance, you know, like frontals and stuff like that. But she was definitely feeling the look. Wow, those things are to her knees, and they look luxurious. Thank you for that. You are a braiding genius. Let's check out our next contestant. Up next, we have a video by Candice B, and this is called Tiny Box Braid Video, dot, dot, dot. Okay, creepy title, but it's okay. I don't know what the dot, dot, dot was for. I don't know, it was just like ominous. It's like, girl, is your head okay? She clearly has much shorter hair than the last girl. I'm interested to see how she gets those braids nice and tight. And also, already, are you joking with these sections? No. Is she about to braid that little thing? I mean, it is called tiny box braid video, so that makes sense. But how do you even braid that? Oh my God. You can't even see the braid, it's so small. Look at her fingers go. Make fun of me all you want for being like shook by this, but I don't know how she's gonna finish this entire head. I can't wait to see how this all goes down. The fact that she's about to sit here for probably like two days and do this, I can't even style my hair more than once a week. Never mind, do this. That's dedication. I have to say, you know, black culture in general, when it comes to hair, y'all rule the hair world. The amount of time that is spent on hair um, in that culture is just unlike any other. Any of my black girls and guys out there, like I have to applaud you for, for just the incredible amount of time and energy that is put on hair. I mean, this girl is gonna be there for ages. Oh my God, look at how many there are already. She's only done like one sixth of her head. It's gonna look so fresh when she's done though. I have to say like, this is gonna look out of this world. It's almost gonna look like it's just her hair, I feel like. It almost doesn't even look like braids because they are so, so tiny. I also feel like you don't really see many women rocking this extremely tiny box braid look. Like it's quite unique and um, definitely the most time consuming thing imaginable. Oh my God, look at her going towards the ends too. I just know her little fingers are like, stop braiding. Or maybe she has like superhuman fingers because I know that I can't do that with my fingers. I would have to take like 10 breaks and I would be so miserable. I would literally just start shaving my head because I'd be so irritated because I'm still doing my hair. Like the days that I bleach my hair and I have to take like, you know, two hours of three hours of time to do it. I'm like, this is torture, this is torture. But now I'm never gonna complain again because this. I'm just gonna replay it in my head and be like, if she could do it, I can do it. Well, I can bleach my hair, not braid it. She seems fine though. She seems like she's doing great. The other thing I just know, I know this hurts. Like I know her scalp is throbbing, is it not? Somebody let me know in the comments. Like, does this hurt? I've had a braid in my hair before once or twice when I had longer hair and that hurt. Not even that. It hurts putting my hair in a ponytail when I have long hair. Like I couldn't wear my hair in a ponytail for the entire day or else my head would be throbbing. Except we do have very different hair. So I'm sure after hundreds of years of braids, um, the hair follicle becomes a little stronger in black women and men than in white boys like me. She is nearing the end of the front of her head. I'm so proud of you. I don't even know you, but I'm so proud. If I were there, I'd be cheering you on and being like, hell yes. Or I'd be like, girl, you're still going at it. You're still, you're still doing it. Okay. 
I legit thought she was like done with her hair and she still has the entire back to go. So she is dipping her hair in boiling hot water, I believe. And don't worry, I'm, I'm pretty sure people don't braid their hair like this with real hair. Um, this is synthetic, like more or less plastic hair, I think. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. You dip it in boiling water to kind of loosen up the hair and make it fall like natural to roundness of your scalp. Does that make any sense? I'm not a braiding expert, but that is what I've, I've obtained over watching these videos for a little while. Um, in about a week or two, maybe I'll be redoing the uh, perimeters of my hair just a wow. little bit longer because I have a lot to do. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up and the holidays. I'm trying to stretch these for the long run. Oh my God. The work you put in was definitely worth it, I think, in, in my personal opinion, but I'm not, I wasn't the one doing it, so you might not think so. But I just realized something. I knew this, but I didn't really think fully through. She has to rebraid the hair as it grows out. How does that work? I would like to know one day how that works. How do you braid hair that is already in a braid? You have to take the entire braid out. No. Yeah. How else would you do it? That just made it even crazier. This whole thing is wild. She has to take all the braids out like on the perimeter of her head and her part in order to get that new growth in. Oh my God, thank you for sharing that, Candace. That was just wild. Like I, I didn't think braids could get that small. Amazing job. <laughs> Up next, we have a video by Nifem Beauty or Knife and Beauty. Um, this is called Box Braiding My 1 Inch 4C TWA After Four Years of Having a Low Cut. 50 inches braids, holy sh that was a lot. Okay, first of all, she has one inch of hair and she's gonna braid it to be 50 inches. Yeah, no, sure. I didn't know that was possible. Here you see I'm taking color 1B, color 27, and 613 to give me a darker variation of blonde so I can use it at the back of my braids and different areas within my braids because I'm going for braids with a gradient look. I'm already highly interested. She just mixed up her own color of hair with three different colors. Y'all are genius. And she's doing blonde. I think it's gonna look so fun on her. Now, over here, I'm showing you my part in. So, I make wigs, and whenever I make wigs, I start from the front. And as you can see, no. I'm starting from the front, so I know exactly how it's going to look like. Her I hair think is short. Is so, it's easier for me to see it and easier for me to braid my hair because it's quite short. My mind is about to be blown. Like, the fact that she's about to go from that length to like this length, it just like, remarkable. I'm already shook, and I haven't even seen her start yet. You want to watch with me? Let's watch what's going on. You got to sit, though. You gotta sit, you gotta sit down. So over here, I'm taking the lighter variation for the front. And now I'm gonna use my leave-in conditioner to help bring back moisture into my hair because my hair gets dry quickly. This helps to moisturize my hair and make sure it's not gonna break after I take my braids out. And now I'm gonna show you how I do my parting. I did tiny parting spaces because I feel like it's the easiest way. Sai is not amused. <laughs> Short like mine. So what I did here was I took the extension and put it right underneath my natural hair. Then I braided my natural hair right to the side. Then I took my natural hair back to the middle of the extensions. Then I parted some extensions with my natural hair and started braiding forward. I realized with this technique, easier for me to braid and way more comfortable for me to braid and grip my hair because it's quite short as you can see. And I just continuously braided forward. Buttercup sandwich. You gotta get down. Daddy's gotta film. Daddy's gotta film, honey. So I continuously braid forward till I reach the breast level, and this is where I add extra extensions to my hair. So at this point, I take an extra tiny bit of extension and I add it right at the behind my braid and then I braid forward again. I don't have much more to say. Each one of these videos just keeps getting more and more intense and wild and like, just like, how was it possible? Like, I get it, like I get it. But at the same time, it's like the combination of just pure talent with um, just like mental strength to have to sit there for like hours and days or I don't even know how long it takes and do this. The fact that it comes out so perfect is just so cool. So I just continued this pattern and tried my very best to make sure they're all aligned and equal so you can get that neat look now for the back of my hair since i didn't have a mirror to look at the back i really just freestyled how do you do the back of your hair without looking in braids like this also have you noticed how not one of these women have complained about the process so what i did was i tried my very best to like pat it straight but i didn't take it too seriously because it's going to be covered by the hair in front anyway and i just continued braiding my hair <laughs> Oh my, oh my 
god, she looks incredible. Oh, like I didn't think I could do it. Oh, you did it. You really did it. Also, the color variation is so pretty. She has highlights and lowlights, and it's just creating this neutral blonde. It looks amazing with her skin. I remember like when I started it, I was very nervous, and I was like, oh my god, can I do this? Can I hold my braids? And like, I did, and I'm very happy about how it turned out. And I hope you guys find it really helpful. And like, if you're also a student and you have different things to do too, just don't rush. Like this entire thing took me like, all together four days. <gasps> She just said it took her four days. That was even longer than I was expecting her to say. Where do people get the time? Holy sh It's literally over the knees and tiny. <laughs> okay, it wasn't even to her knees. It was like past her knees. She takes the cake today for the most spectacular braids. <laughs> oh my God. And just as a reminder, this is the hair length she started with. This to this. Yay! Go for it. Amazing job. Thank you for sharing that video. Those videos were spectacular. I feel rejuvenated. I love watching calming videos like that. They were just so satisfying and the results were incredible. And thank you guys for teaching me how to braid better. I appreciate it, I learned a lot. Make sure you guys follow me and my hair care brand everywhere else. Here are my social media handles right here. If you would like to shop my hair color and my hair care brand, it's called X Mondo. It is linked right down below for you. So check it out. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life. And I'll see you next time. Bye.